All righty, folks. We're going to go ahead and get started. This is uh, Let's Talk Diversity in Our Community. And I'm going to go close the door and turn it over to our panelists. So we want to really have a dialogue here more than um, conveying information. We really want to share information and, and gain more knowledge as a result of that. So hopefully everybody can go ahead and <coughs> uh, join in the conversation with us today. Thank you, Carol. Yep, thank you. Yeah, for those that don't know Carol, she's doing a lot of work on our diversity working group. Yes. So uh, we'll start with introductions. I am Agla Sigler. I work for Axpace. I am also on the board of directors for the OpenStack Foundation. And uh, I am one of the people that are on the diversity working group. And um, I care about diversity because I think we don't have enough women in the OpenStack community. I really would want to work with more of them <laughs> and see more of them. Not that there is anything wrong with men, it's just <laughs> uh, the proportions are so... Out of bad. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so bad. Yeah, hi, I'm Imad Susu, I'm uh, with Intel. Uh, I'm also uh, on the OpenStack Foundation board and uh, part of the diversity working group. Actually, the three of us started the diversity working group at uh, uh, in the OpenStack Foundation. Um, you know, and uh, I mean, uh, I believe diversity is important beyond the uh, beyond that it is right. And this is, you know, uh, Egler talked eloquently about this, but I think also just you know just putting aside all of that from a from a strict uh, um, uh, from a strict company and organizational perspective, <coughs> I think diverse organizations whether they are companies or open source projects or uh, w whichever type of institution just makes those institutions just that much better. And uh, there is, uh, there's actually a lot of research on this topic and we can talk about it uh, more. There's, there's research with a lot of numbers, but there is also uh, a lot of research that was done by, I believe at Stanford's where, where it shows that you know, um, a diverse group you know, uh, have a, a, a collective IQ much better than a non-diverse group. And, and this, is, this is a lot of studies has been done in this area. And I think, you know, uh, as an organization, whether from an Intel perspective or from an OpenStack perspective, I have the vested interest that, you know, our organization, that we are collectively smarter. So uh, anyway, Kavit. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Kavit Munshi. I work for a company called Aptira. I'm also on the OpenStack Foundation board. And diversity for me means inclusiveness, right? I, I, I want more voices from everywhere to be heard, and I want our community to become better for it. And it's it's really difficult to see a certain a certain pattern repeating every year and not having any change. And I thought something needs to be done about that. And I guess uh, once I got on the board, I, I diversity was something. I pursued, and uh, here we are. So hopefully we can use this opportunity to get something meaningful. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Right, so everybody that is a OpenStack Foundation member have to has to register to become one. And when registering, there's a couple questions, and one of them, are you male or female? And uh, I think uh, this, this data is slightly old and but because the foundation is growing so fast and uh, I think now we, we have closer to 30,000 members rather than 20,000 and um, oh it's 20,000 that have responded because this question has been asked uh, was not asked initially so only 9% of our community are women or identify themselves as women so these numbers are really not very good at all. It, they're actually worse than industry average, at least in the U.S., and I'm sure it's worse than in, in the rest of the world. Mm. Uh, when it comes to geographic diversity from the member registration, uh, United States is 36%, India is 14%, and China is almost 13%. However, when we look at the participation in the community, when we look at PTLs, core reviewers, even the board, these 
the numbers are very skewed more more towards U.S. rather than uh, these other uh, other countries that are well represented in the community. A couple of weeks ago, we had sent out a diversity survey that was geared to gather more information about our community be uh, beyond what it has been um, asked in the registration form. And um, we did not get a very great response. However, we have received a lot of great uh, comments in the survey that were really interesting and in some ways surprising. Uh, 538 people responded out of 32,000 that have received the survey link or that were sent out. Now, in some cases, we, we heard, I never got the survey. Okay, well, do you get other emails? Yeah, it could have been lost because if you are part of OpenStack community, there are lots of mailing lists and sometimes the amount of emails is quite large. Uh, I think I have received maybe uh, I, I sent out a follow-up reminder to the community and saying, hey, if you, did not, if you don't have the link, let me know. I'll provide it for you. And uh, I think only a couple people reached out to me and said, hey, I can't find it. Can you send it to me again? So we don't know whether it, it got lost or people don't care. Uh, but but I, think, I think someone also mentioned in the working group that 2% is a very good response rate. <laughs> So <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, I was hoping for a little larger one. Yeah. But, but then again, I care about the, this thing, these mm. things. Um, but I do think 538 people is a good sample. At least yeah. gives yes. us, uh, gives us we at least some a really idea of where. Wha what it's a very good cross thinking. section of what the community yeah. looks like. It's yes, and uh, uh, overall, there are nine percent women in the community and 13 percent of the survey t takers identified themselves as women so it, wa it was not too far off but a good number of women responded uh, we had also asked people if they face any barriers to participate in open stack community we did not ask whether it was their um, they were facing diversity related barriers. It was just open ended question whether they're facing any barriers. And uh, so only about half of the people said that they have no barriers. The other ones were from few barriers to several too many. And uh, we had uh, received a lot of comments on what kind of barriers they face. And this is where it becomes really interesting. As you see, it's some of these barriers are not really diversity related. They're technology related, they're process related, and uh, it, it w some of them were, were diversity related. Some of them were like, I don't have time to work on this. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a barrier, but <laughs> it's not it's something not really. we can fix. <laughs> not right now anyways. Um, but the process and IRC was a big one. IRC, people were saying, I am in China, it's blocked, or my company is blocking, I cannot participate. And, uh, or they were saying, I don't, I, can't, I, I don't use IRC because people are not responsive, or I ask a question and nobody ever responds to me, or, uh, or things related more towards the community. Uh, process it was also similar it was um, the doc documentation is hard to find or is non-existent or they they were saying it, like it's not up to date or everything that is documentation related that could potentially uh, potentially could get fixed but it is a lot of work H hard to get the code upstream uh, this was also a big portion of the comments yes that the I process is too complicated, that it's antiquated. Uh, and there were a lot of complaints about, people thought there was like a cabal of like a clique, like they, they, they thought that uh, there were certain patches that wouldn't get through just because there was an organized uh, existing kind of elitism going on. And it, it was very hard to hear about. Uh, right. It's, it's the large projects that we all know and we probably know people working on these and we're like, wow, I had no idea that it was so hard for newcomers. Now, in some cases, it, it might be 
uh, reasonable to think that for a newcomer it's going to be hard to contribute to NOVA because of the scope of the project and the complexity. Now, I don't know, it might not be the case. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so yes, there is it's a huge barrier. Uh maybe that's just the magic of uh there. Maybe when people just get to know each other, well, Yeah, but but I'm I'm not saying the complaints might have been valid or in invalid. This is about the perception out there. People, people, people were complaining about the review process, and they were complaining about not being heard. So, if their patch was rejected, they felt like they weren't given a decent enough reason. I don't know. It's, it's. I think this, this, leaving diversity aside, this actually highlights a need for all the projects, TC, anyone to do feedback. Like we need feedback from the community, from the developers, as to what is going on. I mean. This was a, not just a surprise to us. This was a surprise to the TC. They didn't know that f more, like almost 50% of the people were facing barriers. Uh, from a, from a, from if you were a traditional software company, this would be very, very bad. Yeah. I mean, this would be con considered catastrophic. You know, so uh, I, I think, I, I think, leave diversity aside, but there needs to be some process for feedback. Some process for change and improvement. And yeah. Right. Uh, the next, next common barrier was time zones, that most meetings are US and Europe time zone centered. Now, a lot of large projects do run meetings in US centric zone and Asia Pacific centric zone. NOVA is one of them. And I did talk to the NOVA PTL and say, hey, what do you guys do? And he said, yeah, we have great participation in both time zones. So. I don't know if it's really like e even though people do have the two different time time zone meetings, it can still be inconvenient for quite a few people. So yeah. it's hard to have a time <laughs> that works for everybody. But I think what happens there is exactly what's happening with the diversity working group, where people, the vast majority of people, tend to join the the U.S. Europe, and end up with like a very, very small meeting for the... Uh, uh right, yeah. so I at least in NOVA case, uh, they, they have about equal participation in NOVA both. NOVA is probably an anomaly though, I mean uh, given probably. the size <laughs> of the project and the, uh, yeah. you know. It's, pro it's probably true, yeah. and uh, NOVA d uh, had has a former PTL that is actually based yeah. in Australia, so... But yes, I, I'm sure okay. that's an anomaly for diversity working group we don't get a lot of participation in the Asia Pacific time zone. For DEF Core, we also try to run it into different time zones. And uh, in both time zones, we were getting the same people, except in the other, uh, in the late evening meeting, we were getting fewer people. And almost none, or sometimes one, from Asia Pacific region. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, diversity Working Group has a charter. Uh, please take a look at it uh, on the wiki. It has been appro approved by the board. And our ma main goal is to foster an inclusive and welcoming place for all people. And by diversity, we mean all kinds of diversity. However, we do have a work plan on how to increase diversity in phases. Uh, because diversity can include so many different aspects, in phase one, we focus only on gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, geography, and culture. And, and, and follow in next two phases, race, ethnicity, religion, education. Uh, in phase three, age and disabilities. Uh, for, for our plan, we have to establish data-driven baseline and uh, we already talked about some of that data. And uh, we sent out the survey, I think, a little over two weeks ago, and we received the results back in the middle of last week. So we didn't really have a lot of time to uh, slice the data in different ways and uh, really uh, go through it. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think we are now going to work on analyzing the data a bit more and then establishing some goals and some results. 
so we can then reach out to the board to the tc and because we we've already spoken to the tc and we have we have volunteers who are willing to help us but we need we need we need goals we need uh, metrics that we can achieve and we can targets we can hit and i think more i think over the coming weeks we'll dissect the data a bit more and take it from there yes Yes, that's one of the uh, slices that we want to take a look at. But in, in so as I mentioned, we received only 534, I think, responses total. Oh, the first one. Yes, that that is something we also should probably take a look at. Yes. All right, so now we would really like to uh, open the panel for discussion, and uh, we have some topics to discuss, so we can either discuss them or you can try to ask us questions. We do have a mic, and since it's being recorded, it would be great if um, everyone used the microphone before speaking. And Carol uh, has graciously agreed to help us. <laughs> You know, I think one of the areas that companies are addressing is doing unconscious bias training across companies because that really unhurts uh, a lot of hidden biases and, and barriers that people may put up without even knowing. Um, have you thought about doing something like that, at least for the leadership of OpenStack, so that they can um, be more inclusive? You know, I think it's a great idea. No, we have not thought of it. But I, I think it would be great if PTLs and core reviewers would go through it. I don't know how <laughs> reasonable it is. <laughs> uh, no, we, but can, we can make it, yeah. It's a one-hour yeah. training available on the Facebook page. Oh, okay. You know, it was, uh, I can send the link to you guys. Oh, yes. That Which would one be is great. that, Ruchi? This, uh, you know, I attended a Grace Hopper's conference last week, a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh -huh. and uh, Shell Sandberg talked about it. She g sent out the link, and I can send it's a actually yeah, it's a yeah, we were, I mean, uh, Mori and I were at a conference also uh, when a couple of weeks ago, and there was like an amazing speaker who talked about that, and I think uh, actually the, you know, it would help, you know, maybe we can start with, at least with the joint board TC yeah, definitely. meeting yeah. next time, and just go from there, scale it from there. Yeah. I mean, an R is not <laughs> unreasonable. Right, yeah. and uh, and I think I I don't think it would be unreasonable to ask PTLs and core reviewers to I go through so. it, yeah. especially if it's only one hour. Yeah, mm. but, but that's a great suggestion. Yeah, but Nithya, speaking uh, about the unconscious bias, I was I mean in that conference that uh, that we were talking about, it, which was um, you know um, a professor I cannot remember whether it's UCLA or UC Berkeley that they did this uh, study and. They, they had this one resume uh, that the resume was exactly the same, word for word, I mean th exactly the same, okay? But with one difference, okay? Uh, one resume used a name that sounds African-American, Leticia or so on, and the other one used uh, a, a white American sounding name, Lauren or something like that. And the res and, and this was distributed fairly widely among companies, and <laughs> the response rate from managers were 50% 50 50 more wow. positive towards the resume with the of the person with the name Lauren, which is th it's the exactly same resume, and this was this was done like a fairly broad study, so it's not like an anomaly or something like that. So so the unconscious what Nithya talked about the unconscious bias it's actually a very uh, uh, a very real bias that, that that ends up really hurting us because you're you're, you're ending up, you know, um, uh, not including people, you know, mm. based on their technical merit and so on. Because obviously, I mean, the 50% called in Lauren because of technical merit, you know, so you end up missing out on a lot of talent when you do that. Yeah. Other. I know this has been discussed somewhat on the IRC channel, but uh, I think our code of conduct could use um, could be more 
specific towards um, sexism and racism. Um, right now it's geared towards uh, people who are, I think, on the OpenStack Foundation, things like don't take bribes. And um, there's many open source projects that have already adapted and expanded their code of conduct. So if, there's, if I face some sexism or racism, I have nowhere to report it to. Um, so I think there is a way to report it it might not be obvious how to do it. And I did talk to uh, Lauren from the foundation and she said that those complaints do go to Jonathan Bryce and uh, they get about one complaint or less per year. Now, I don't know if it's because it's not obvious how to report yeah. it or uh, whether it's not happening. Now, I think it's probably the reporting issue. I, th I think but just because we are getting a question from the audience that they don't probably know about the mechanism being there, I, I would say it's right. it should be made m well known. You know, it should be publicized. Right, and and that's why I'm saying that yeah. it's it's not obvious how to report. I I've actually seen the code of conduct, and it doesn't say anything about facing like um sec like sexism. Like okay, uh, so it's not included in there. So even if I did uh, encounter someone being like sexist against me. Uh, the code of conduct doesn't state that that's against it. It just says like respect people, but you can't really go and report do it. You and uh, call it specifically. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, uh, just a question to you. Um, it, do you have a code of conduct that you like? Uh, actually, I, I did. Uh, no, I'm 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 asking <laughs> that seriously because before we invest time, uh, like I'll, I'll give you an example. We, we've been discussing yeah. the uh, the DCO, and we right. just decided yeah. to use the Linux Foundation DCO because it uh, was, you know. But I, so I it would be ra really good if if there is yeah, if somebody knows of something that exists, would be great to just adopt it. We are so in the I did um, talk to the TC board about this, mm -hmm. um, forking the Django code of conduct, which is a really good code of conduct. It Kay. has a reporting guide. It has uh, an enforcement manual. So if Someone like it doesn't. It, your code of conduct doesn't work unless someone is enforcing it, right? If I have right. a way to communicate with right. someone and someone actually um, is, you know, uh, talk to or you know, there's a way for it to become changed. And it also has like a change log. And I have brought this up to the TC, but um, they can you send it to one of us? Yeah, I mean, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I know uh, we talked about some of it <coughs> during the meetings, but I think other things took priority, so we definitely can bring it back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't think with those kind of changes. Yeah, and uh, so there is, I think, general code of conduct, and then there is a code of conduct for That's each summit, yeah. and, and the summit one, I think, is slightly different. It uh, like addresses different things. Mm -hmm. I think the Linux Foundation did update recently their code of conduct to include something along what what you described. So we should we should just take a look at that as well. Yeah. Look at what what did what did the Linux Foundation do? We are in the business of open source. Oh, you did. Oh, really? Yeah, just just send it to us. Yeah. That would be great then. <laughs> oh, you did. Awesome. Okay, Thank cool. You. Hey, thanks. Yes, for those of you that don't know, <laughs> we have an IRC channel. <laughs> Are you in China, or is this a company issue or a country issue? <laughs> or a personal issue. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? So yes, we have a, a few prepared discussion topics. Uh, how do we attract more diverse people to join our community? And uh, by diversity, Right now, we're focusing on the three, the, the, the gender, geography, and... Uh, gender, geography, and sexual orientation. Right? Yes. So h how do we track that? Because right now, we supposedly have a pretty good geographical diversity when it comes yeah. to members, but they're not really participating, or it's not being represented. Can I ask a question? Um, I, uh, much like pipeline discussions around gender focus on pipeline and not retention. Um, I mean, is that a secondary piece to to this question or is that something that we're not discussing? I'm trying to like figure out what we're focused on. Uh, I think the pipeline this uh, question is a great question and uh, it, it's definitely something we need to address. When we did the survey, a lot of the results that we saw was, one of the things that we saw 
was that OpenStack community is not really, no longer uh, developer-centric community anymore. We now have people participating in many, many different ways. Uh, so yes, like when it comes from development or technical side, we need to have a good pipeline. But from other side, um, it's, it's probably like people that work uh, at the companies and they get involved, uh, I suppose. And yeah. But how, how, how do we get them to speak up in community forums or uh, mailing lists or IRC? Well, and to stick around. Right? And stick around. Yeah. And you're, stick around. you're not going to be, I mean, and certainly in the technical track, you're not going to become a core reviewer if you don't stick around. Yes. You might yes. not even ever get a patch landed if you don't stick around. And I think that kind of stickiness aspect yeah, the retention really is really the retention hard part. Is, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, so the tools did come up as, as major barriers, and uh, I think that's something we really ne need to talk about uh, in, the, in our diversity working group and bring it to the board and ask, can we get more online training on all of these different tools? Can we make it more obvious where to find documentation if you don't know uh, how to use Garrett or IRC? how to get started like i think it's all of it is there but you mm. have to really search yeah. i think uh, i think i think uh, we also talked about recognition for non developer tasks and i think that needs something f there needs to be more recognition for maybe doing online videos and tutorials you know i i i i think the more content that is out there that draws people in the better it is and the community needs to recognize that and i think uh, I think I think the second we start doing that, people are are going to put effort into it. Uh, I guess uh, I guess I guess the other question I had was, uh, what do you guys reckon we should do to get more participants? Right, like like people keep them here because people join all well and good, but then we've seen like a tapering off effect. Like, do you? Do you have any I concrete ideas for us? I mean, what what do you reckon, Carol? Hi. So I, I don't know if this necessarily will bring in a diverse type of people, but mm -hmm. it will certainly attract just people in general. And this is something that I saw in the Mozilla group um, not too long ago. I saw a website called What Can I Do for Mozilla dot org, I believe. And it basically just was a questionnaire. It's like, what do you like to, you know, what do you think is interesting? It doesn't necessarily take you down a particular path until you drill down into, oh, I'm a, I'm a technical writer. Mm -hmm. And then it says, well, are you, are you, do, do you like, um, you know, um, things about compute? Are you a networking person? And then at the end of them asking you those questions, they say, well, here are like five projects that you can get involved in, and here are some people that you can reach out to on those projects to get you started. And so uh, it, having something like that where someone just green that, you know, they've never been in the, in the organization before, but they've heard all about OpenStack and they want to get involved and they're not exactly sure where to start, having something like that um, certainly um, drew me into even, you know, just using the, <laughs> just using the website like two or three times to see, okay, I'm just going to answer the question differently <laughs> just to see what projects <laughs> is going to, right? So that's, it just, it's, it's, there's a level of sort of engagement that, mm -hmm. you know, that one little website was able to do. And I ended up like, I'll say, okay, well, this does sound a little interesting. And, mm -hmm. and I actually did um, get involved for a while. So nice. having something like that that just, you know, sort of like the front door that's very easy for folks to get into as opposed to sort of overwhelming you with, you know, wiki pages and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Something very easy that someone can, you know, very quickly get in. And not only that, but once I got into uh, the project that I was working on a couple years back, um, as soon as I got there, they noticed that I was a new person. They, they introduced themselves to me. And they said, well, you know, how'd you end up here, you know? And, it, and then they immediately kind of engaged me in conversation, and we began talking about what That's they good. were doing. So yeah. that was sort of a soft introduction into working with that group. So that may be something that we could maybe adapt. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds actually really cool. I yeah. think we have a wiki page where <laughs> it talks about how you can get involved. I don't know how easy it is to find or... or um, 
whether yeah. it's, it's hard to find for new beginners, but I definitely, I think I, I, I think I seen it. I don't think I'm making this up in my mind, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I know we have. But a this few is, but this is one topic where, unlike the IRC, I think it, it would probably be appropriate to ditch the wiki. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think that <laughs> makes Sorry. a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the idea, by the way. That, 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 was, that was good. Yeah. I know we have a few uh, marketing people from the foundation, <laughs> so maybe they they know better. Uh, about this something more appropriate than a wiki for the yeah yeah choose your own adventure kind of a thing there's actually yeah. a, a session happening right now that's about documenting kind of the culture and the practices of the community it's, it's in the Design Summit building. Um, and one of the things that I think kind of needs to meet there is about managing expectations around contribution. So mm -hmm. a lot of people are not used to code review um, in their jobs. A lot of people are not used to participating necessarily in a community environment where they're not going to land the patch the first seven or eight times. times yeah. And helping them set those expectations for themselves so that they can not think poorly of themselves when that happens, because it will. Um, is really crucial. So I think maybe circling in with those folks who are writing up a lot of that documentation would be great. Well, that sounds that Excellent. sounds like a really good session. I wish the design sessions were recorded. Yeah, that's a good point. They're not? No. Oh, okay. They're afraid to go to <laughs> uh, So what I've seen a lot in the Outreach ERC channel, uh, which is the internship program for um, underrepresented people to get started on OpenStack mm -hmm. is that they don't read the wiki. <laughs> uh, even though we always point them to the wiki, they just don't want to read. They want to contribute. They don't want to read like a book on how to contribute. So um, yeah, it would be nice if we had alternatives to a wall of text on the wiki. I think, yeah, I think at some point people will have to read but yes, it, it's hard to make people read a lot and uh, just people stick have, through it. People have converted every book possible into audiobooks now. People will go to great lengths to avoid reading. I mean, <laughs> it's... I, I yeah, but I, I think her point that nobody yeah. wants to listen to two hours of, just yeah. to learn how to contribute, contribute you know, yes. like what's the short version? Am I understanding your question? Yeah. yeah, I mean, hey, what's the short? Give me like the 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 one Synopsis, quarter of yes. a page that allows me to get started. Yes, that that's is. right. And I think that's um, that that's probably a, a broader issue, you know, that um, mm. that the openstackorg slash start is probably where it's more appropriate to yes. to take a look at that, but. But that is, I haven't looked at it, to be honest with you. Like, how do you get started with, uh, with contributions? Because I, I, I mean, there's no chance that I'm going to be contributing anytime <laughs> soon. But, um, but you um, do contribute. But See, you are contributing uh, right now. I yeah, mean. No, no, not, <laughs> not in the way not that... Not in the yeah. way, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but we should, I mean, uh, somebody should look at it. I, probably somebody like me who, who's absolutely not going to contribute or have not contributed in the past. So to look at it, to see, like, how hard it would be. Uh, but th that would be yeah, something so interesting uh, to do. I know I'm trying to remember which summit it was, but myself, HSFT, and I think someone else, we actually did a quick walkthrough on how to uh, start with contributing, and I'm sure it's recorded on YouTube somewhere. It was OpenStack Summit I session. Think, okay. and I think there was, a, there was a slide deck that went out as well Yeah. with, with, with the steps right. of how to get your first patch in or something like that. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure we were not the only ones do doing it. So yeah, there's ways for some, if someone really just wants a quick overview, there's YouTube videos. Now, if you're in China, I think you're out of luck, but uh, um, but yes, there, there's definitely ways, and yes? It's also a good call that I think it's clear on the Angular features. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, most people are Windows users, so it can make things difficult for them to to submit a patch along those lines, unfortunately. Right, and 
that's one of those things where if you are not working on Windows, you don't even think about it. Right. Guilty. Uh, I mean, I'm guilty of the same, and I, I haven't used Windows in forever, and I wouldn't even know how to help someone. We can fix that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I, and I know, like for big corporations, that's the default environment is the Windows machine. And I honestly don't know what people do when they have to work in a Linux environment. But they're issued with Windows. I assume they're either dual boot or they run a VM. Or you run VirtualBox is what I do yeah. on my Windows system, mm. so that I can go ahead and get the tools, and then I get myself away from the firewall, so I can actually get things to work. Right, which is a lot of extra work. Oh yeah, limits what you can do and when you can do it. Yeah. Right. So what else do you think we should do or know? I, I think we have only five minutes left. Does anyone know? Okay. Um, can I just ask, does anybody, did anybody come into this session not knowing about the diversity working group? All right. Is everybody on the Diversity IRC channel? All right. Some head nods, some hand raises. Uh, for if you are using IRC, please join us on OpenStack-Diversity uh, channel. Uh, we use foundation mailing list for all of our communications. It's not a very busy list, so you won't be overwhelmed. It's not like the the main list, so uh, please sign up and um, participate and send us your ideas. If you don't want to send it to the mailing list, send it to one of us and yeah. uh, or reach out to us. I'm on, I am on IRC all, pretty much all the time. I'm also on email pretty much all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I and I and I guess I mean don't don't uh, don't hold back right I mean that's we want ideas we want because uh, we're trying to do some we're trying to change the way uh, our community is represented and it's not going to be an easy task and we need as much support as we, we can right. possibly get we need all of you we need the community uh, you know if, if you think this is worthwhile go and tell your coworkers your friends that to get involved participate. If you have specific challenges that you think OpenStack community or foundation are really terrible at, let us know, mm. either publicly or privately. Yeah. <laughs> because right. if we don't know it's a problem, we can't help yeah. fix it. Uh, there was one last point that I wanted to make. And I think someone here said it before, which is if there are some simple projects and low-hanging fruit that people can you know, start with, uh, I I documentation being one, reporting a bug or doing a bug fix or, you know, something simple that each group can provide, uh, then that is a stepping stone towards more participation. Yeah, True. and I think uh, when, uh, for those of you that don't know and you want to start contributing uh, in each project, after the bug is submitted, I think they go to triage and identify as trivial, medium, uh, hard and like the, yeah. the level of effort that it would take and uh, for beginners it's recommended that they start with trivial and mm -hmm. maybe maybe someone else can talk to whether that's working or not any open stack developers here all right, that's another <laughs> strategy. You submit a bug and then you fix it. Yeah. Or <laughs> you create a bug. <laughs> cool. cool. Thank you, everyone, for Thank joining you, us. Everyone.